Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. We have a review for you today. Uh, this is the 11 Hobby F8F Bearcat. It comes from uh, banggood.com. And so they sent me one to, to try out, give you guys a review of. Man, it's an awesome looking model. And so we are gonna put this together, give you a full assembly and flight review. If you're not familiar with the Grumman Bearcat, it's a real high performance machine. They wanted the biggest engine in the smallest airframe to get absolute performance, the highest performance that they could get. So it was all about high power, high thrust, and a small lightweight airframe. And they achieved that with the Bearcat. I'm sure the propulsion group was really happy about that one. And I don't know if you know this, the Bearcat, it's a real animal. Not real ferocious, but it is an animal. Anyhow, let's put this airplane together. We'll touch base then with you guys, give you a closer look, let you know how it assembles, and then we'll take it out to the field. So, let's go. Now here is our assembled Bearcat. As you probably noticed, parts count is super low. Basically you bolt the wing on, bolt the stabs on to the fuselage, and that's pretty much it. You know, from there it's all radio setup. Uh, I think I had the airplane assembled in about 20 minutes, uh, and then the basic radio setup took maybe another 20 minutes. Uh, so in under an hour you've got a fully ready to fly airplane. In terms of the finish, it's really quite nice. You know, you get a beautiful rendition of the Bearcat. Uh, the color and markings are done well and the shape is is quite good. Uh, there's maybe a touch more foam texture to it than I've seen on other EPO airplanes, uh, but it's, it's really not bad. That being said, the overall fit of everything on this airplane is excellent. You know, the gaps are minimal and the hatch line is almost invisible, which is pretty impressive. The flap design is nice in scale. They've got an upper surface scuffer and seal as opposed to just an open notch that you normally get on foam warbirds. Also, they've done a really good job with the landing gear stance. You know, the main gear on the full-size aircraft are, are quite complex. You know, you've got that big four-bladed prop on the front of the airplane, and so ground clearance is an issue. However, you know, you've got kind of the small airframe that you have to package this long landing gear in, and so as a result, the strut actually folds in half on itself as it retracts. It's kind of nuts. So the compromise that Eleven Hobby made with the standard retracts and the location of the gear they chose, you know, pulls off the looks of the ground stance pretty well. Uh, also, they have appropriately sized tires. Imagine that. Now I did unfortunately have a couple impact marks on the airframe from shipping. Most notably, there were a couple creases at the front of the cowl, uh, top and bottom. There was a large impacted corner on the outside of the box, so it was obviously dropped in transit. Uh, overall though, the packaging is very good, uh, and the blemishes were, were small, especially considering you know the thing was dropped on its way to me. Now the recommended battery for the airplane is the 3S2200, which flies the airplane quite nicely. You've got a nice large hatch and you know you can fit quite easily very large batteries if you wanted to. Now to get the CG with the 2200 pack, uh, it does require adding a small amount of nose ballast. Uh, my CG fell out at 85 millimeters to 90 millimeters uh, when measured from the wing saddle leading edge back. The forward most location noted in the instructions is 90 millimeters, so I'm right there and slightly forward of that. I wouldn't want to go any further back. So with a 40C 2200 pack, I have about three quarter ounces of weight in the nose to get that CG location. You know, in flight, this location felt rock solid to me, and so 
I really didn't want to push the CG any further back. Plus, it doesn't require a lot of elevator throw, which also tells me that, you know, it's probably approaching that aft limit. Now, in terms of the radio setup, it was super quick to get the airplane programmed. I found that the recommended high rates were, were pretty touchy, and so I fly the airplane with low rates on everything. So my control throws came out to be, for the elevator, 3 16 inch up and down with 10% expo. For ailerons, 7 16 inch up and down with 15% expo. Uh, the rudder, 5 8 inch left and right, which was basically all I could get from it. I would have liked to get more. If you can get more from it, uh, the airplane will do a knife edge pretty, pretty easily. And then finally for the flaps, I have about 7 8 inch for the mid flap. And then for the full flap, I've got 1 and 7 8 inch. Uh, and uh, that makes the airplane land really, really sweet. I found that didn't need any elevator mix, uh, but know that you know if you do deploy the flaps at higher speeds, the airplane might balloon a little uh, until it does slow down. So you can keep that in mind. So now the big question, how does it fly? In a word, this Bearcat flies awesome. You know, this little airplane has good speed and authority in the air and can perform pretty much any maneuver uh, that you throw at it. There's plenty of power provided from the 3S pack and you know, she just looks great in the air. The Bearcat is such an awesome shape to see flying. It's classic. Also, for someone learning, looking to step into Warbirds, this airplane is a great candidate as it just flies super easily. Uh, but I mean, you don't want to hear me talk about it. You want to see it. So, here's a quick preview flight video. And if you would like to see the full flight video, you can see that here. Uh, so check it out, and then we'll wrap things up. So there we have it. You know, as a whole, the 11 Hobby f f Bearcat is an awesome little airplane. You know, she has the looks and she has the flight characteristics to really back it up. You know, if you're a Bearcat fan, I don't think you'll be disappointed. They've really nailed the shape on this one. It all just looks right. Now, as good as it is on 3S, I can't help myself. I'm thinking I may put a larger speed controller in it and just give 4S a try at some point. I can imagine that the airplane would be a blast with that much power. You know, unlimited vertical, super high speed passes, you know, it might be a little much, but it'd be fun to give it a shot and see what it does. Now, if only we could just get a Bearcat in a 1400 millimeter size. I'm telling you, it'd be awesome. Anyone? Anyhow guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this review helpful. As always, I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, with links to everything, uh, so be sure to check that out. Now some of you guys have asked about the Freewing Mirage Kefir conversion progress. Well, progress is being made in the background, and so here's a little sneak peek of that. We have 3D printed parts. So here's, we got the nose. Uh, this is the exhaust shroud and turkey feathers. Here's the ventral tank that goes on the bottom of the airplane, and we got some, some other ones too. So I think we've got all the parts done, uh, and so we are ready to start in on episode two of that and show you guys you know, what we're gonna do with that on this kit bash. So that's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Be sure to subscribe to get everything when it's posted. Until next time, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you at the field.